Hello and welcome to In the Cool of the Day. We are here to inspire you to live out your God-given dreams by using the gifts stored up inside of you. I am your host, Malika Star Carey. Today, as always, we are conducting God's business, God's way. One of the things I know better about is God being in the business of teaching his children to know who they were created to be. It is his priority that we have confidence that we are uniquely created in his image. I, live, I love, love the Message Bible's version of Psalms 139, 14 through 16, which says, Oh yes, you have shaped me inside then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, high God. You're breathtaking, body and soul. I am marvelously made. I worship in adoration. What a creation. You know me inside and out. You know my every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something. Like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days before of my life all prepared before I was even before I even lived one day. Inside each of us is a perfect design to equip us to live out our best life possible. There is greatness in each of us. Often we struggle with discovering what that design is because we are distracted by the noise of life, noises of rejection, abuse, neglect, and poverty weigh us down from hearing the voice of God. My guest today knows all too well about the noise and the distractions, but she also has the strategies to silence those noise and pestilence so that we can clearly hear from God and begin to walk in our divine design purpose. Please welcome with me my guest for today. She is a mother, an evangelist, a speaker, an entrepreneur, an author, and a public service for over 25 years in the federal government. Her passion is to serve, teach, inspire, and encourage lives of both young and seasoned adults who struggle and battle with strongholds of low self-esteem. She teaches to live better by knowing your worth so that you can walk in confidence that you need in order to feel, fulfill the purpose God has for you. Please welcome my friend and prayer warrior, Miss Tina I believe Harmon. Welcome to In the Cool of the Day. Thank you so much, Malika. I am so honored and blessed and favored to be here today. And I thank you so much for the invitation. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Well, I want to get right into the show. But before I get into the show, I'm going to tell my audience how I know you. So actually, we met through at NET. And that is the Entrepreneurs and Professional Network, where we build not just networking strategies, but we build relationships. And so over the years, we've been able to build a relationship. And I'm so glad that I've been inspired to have met you and gotten to know you over the years. And so I want my audience to feel just as comfortable with you as I do. So awesome. before I get started, I'm going to ask you to tell all our watchers about T about Tina. Tina is a mother, as you indicated. Um, I am a public servant for over 25 years, actually. Um, hopefully one day I'll get to uh, retire right. soon. Um, I, my son uh, is 33 years old, and I'm just, motherhood is wonderful. Sometime I wish, I said, oh Lord, why didn't I just have one more? You know, or now my son plans to get married, so, and I have a granddaughter. But I'm like, uh, God, can they have a little boy? Cause I really wanna see him, like my son was walking this, you know, around the house and running and everything. So it's amazing. And uh, the job that I do on a regular basis, but my passion and my love it's being an entrepreneur. And I've been an entrepreneur since I was a little girl. I started with baking cakes. Right, wow, can I get a slice? Yes, I bake cakes all the time, but I learned that the cakes were just a hobby. Mm -hmm. 
Um, then I sold cell phones and pagers. I've sold jewelry. I've done quite a bit of things, but now to walk in what my call is, I used to think that I was going to be this worldwide singer. You know, you want to know about Tina. I did. I used to make anything out of a mic and I would just sing in my room. But guess what? It wasn't singing. It was actually speaking. It was actually encouraging other people. So a little bit about Tina. I'm a dreamer right. and I am a visionary. Right. And I like living out those things. I used to be called hard headed all the time. Why? But you know, because you would tell me not <laughs> to, but if I felt that I was supposed to really do something, I'm gonna do it. And regardless, if someone thinks that I'm hard headed or not, guess what? I believe in something I should do. And I've tried many things, many things, but today I can truly say that I am truly walking in my purpose, my call, and I'm sharing my gifts and my talents with others to inspire and to motivate. So you would say that actually, and I go through this, a lot on my show as I tell people not to give up on their dreams, that there's something that's birthed inside of us at birth that shapes us into what we desire to be. So for me, um, I wanted to be an actress and I always saw myself in the big lights and the screen, but that's not how my life started because my life started with a little bit of torment and I was actually teased a lot growing up because I was the tallest, the skinniest, and I had a big head and I, I got called a lot of names. So I didn't think I was TV worthy. And then God was great enough to put some friends in my life who would say, oh, you're tall, you could be a model, right? So, but then that didn't happen for me either until I got to be an adult. So how do you speak to someone who says, I have these dreams, but my life just not look like that dream? You know, Malika, I shared somewhat that I used to think that I was gonna be a singer. So I would enter talent shows and different things. And I was someone who loved to dance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just thought that I would be on that particular type of stage with arts and performing. Um, even coming up, I, I'm the only girl. I'm uh, the, I have three other siblings and they're all boys, but life was kind of difficult. Um, there was rejection and pain and hurt and, and different things, and I never really had support. However, there was something in you. And you know, the enemy always try to stop what's in you. Right. Because I was somebody who was told that I would be nothing. Right. And I'm not even gonna share that part of that story. Right. But that was one of the negativities. And you know, and sometimes you think like that, but I can truly say and encourage the audience that no matter what's said to you, if there's a vision and there is a dream in your heart and you feel like that something that you're supposed to do, push. It may have to wait. Waiting is okay, mm -hmm. but continue to believe. One of the things I did as a young person through my pain was I journaled. Wow. Even up to adulthood, and I still do some now. Wow. But I've done journaling for years. That's where I wrote all my pain, my hurt, my happies, everything. I would write it down. Well, I'm going to take a minute right there and, and interject on there because of the journaling. Because right now we're in a season that I'm going through with my pastor, Yolanda. Um, we are actually on this gratitude journey. And part of this journey of being grateful for life and love is to keep a journal so that we can take account of everything we're grateful for. See, like you, I, I've got journals. I've started writing when I was 12. So mm -hmm. I know exactly how you are, where you talk about, about the journals and keeping the painting. And that's where I kept a lot. I also wrote poems that, where I was able to unleash some of the, unleash some of the pain, you know? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't let it go, it just makes you rot into the core. But I wanted to go back to the journals because a lot of people say they have a book inside of them. Mm -hmm. And so with that book inside of them, would you think that the process of journaling really helped you to create the fantabulous you? 
Now, I can say when I was younger, I didn't think about the book until much years later. And I think it was after I got past the pain and the rejection and the hurt. Mm -hmm. Though, again, as I indicated that, I used to write down all my pain, my suffering, things that you can't tell nobody else about. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, I found that you could tell it to, to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so, some stories you can't tell. You have to hold those stories, because mm -hmm. everybody don't understand which you have to say. Right. But later as I growed and let's, I matured, mm -hmm. I had really had something to say. And I wanted to inspire someone else who was going through some of the things that I was going through. Right. And the pain and the hurt. And letting them know you are somebody. You have something in you. You have something great to share. And so you would journal. And so a lot of people, I feel, if they would journal and write some stuff out, they may not hurt people, you know, or sought the help that they needed. Right. Now, I want to say that some people go to psychiatrists and they get all the medical help that they needed. But I'm so glad that Jesus got me. Tell the truth, girl. And he entered my heart. Tell it. And because of that Psalm 139, mm. that I heard that I was fearfully and wonderfully made. And it showed me that I was unique right. by divine design. Everybody doesn't look the same. Right. There is something different about everyone with shapes, sizes, color, hair, everything. There's something different with everyone. But does it mean that you're less than? Does it mean that you can't achieve and obtain the things? You know, when I think about the word, it tells us that we're more than conquerors. It tells us that we're victorious. So therefore, if that, if the word of God, and I totally believe in the word of God, right. that it is the infallible truth that we can live a life of victoriousness. We can live a life of victory because we are more than a conqueror. Right. And so therefore, it's nothing I can't do. It's nothing you can't do. It's nothing that the audience can't do. But we gotta push through. And that's the other key. How do we push through? Well, we're gonna talk about that and when we come back after our break. But I wanted to say that that what you said about being marvelously, wonderfully made, that, that God would actually think enough about me to make me marvelous and make me in his likeness and image. But we're going to take a break. We're going to let the audience go run to the bathroom and come back. And then we're going to talk more about Tina, but really I want to get back into the fantabulous you. And I also want to talk about what is going on in your life and what makes you, we're going to talk about this word fantabulous, like where did it come from? <laughs> How did it come about? Because my friends and family want to know better about being fabulous and mm -hmm. fantabulous. You got a new word that's going into Webster's Dictionary because everybody's going to start saying I'm fantabulous. Fabulous yes, when are. they get back from um, when we come back and they get to see what we actually are going to talk about here. So join us. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back. You are watching In the Cooler Today, where we are talking about God's business and building a fantabulous you, so that you have the tools you need in order to live out your purpose on here on earth. Welcome back to the show with me, Miss Tina Harmon. And she has the book, Fantab Becoming a Fantabulous You. So Miss Tina, tell us what it is to be a fantabulous you. Fantabulous. Where did that word come from? Fantabulous means marvelous. And so when we talk about Psalms 139, it tells us that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. It tells us how God knew us before we even entered our mother's womb. Now, I'll tell you the story about how that word came to be. And, you know, God gives downloads. Mm -hmm. And so as I was contemplating on the book, 
I didn't really know the title. I thought about a couple of things, but it's like when I got home, I heard the word fantabulous, had never seen the word before, had no clue. So I said to my son, you ever heard the word fantabulous? He says, yes, mom, it is a word. Really? It's a slang word. Oh, get out. And so he looked it up and I was like, wow, thank you, Lord. Right. Thank you. Because there was books that I want to do, 30 Day of Becoming Fantab, this, that, and the other. That wasn't it. But How to be, be great in five minutes. Great. Right. You know, we're always given steps, right? <laughs> right, right. But with this, I'm talking about from the inside out. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we're looking at the out exterior. No, it's about the inner. You can look great on the outside and you can be messed up in the inside. Because we do that. We know how to dollar. We know how to throw on the Mac. We know how to put in the hair, glue it in, sew it in. We know how to look fabulous, hair done, nails done. And then the inside, we're rotten to the core or we're suffering. You know, we, we've got jealousy and bitterness and, and envy inside of us. How does someone get released from that? Well, how does someone get released from the low self-esteem of, of the rejection and the pain and the hurt so that they can emerge to being fantabulous? You know, Malika, when I think about my life, I had to go through a process, and it is a process. It's not a one, two, three, four step. Pop a pill. That's it. You have to be willing to release your heart mm -hmm. and the things that are in it. You know, I always say, you know, I can't let anything stand in my heart because I'm not going to have a heart attack for nobody. Right. You know, because the heart, the blood has to pump through right. the heart. And so the heart is the first thing that really we need to deal with. Mm -hmm. Then we need to deal with our spirit. And so for me, I battled um, the heartache and I was, I had a bad problem with anger. Okay. okay, talk to me because I covered that up mm. and I can just share the testimonies. The last time that I dealt with that anger was one day I, I screamed at my son. Talk now. Cause and I he was about 11 that. years old mm. and that scream caused his nose to bleed. Wow. Profusely till that bleed would not stop. I'm going to stop yelling at my kids. Okay. And ahead. I heard the Holy Ghost say, don't ever do it again. Mm -hmm. But that was the reason my anger. I was angry even as a teenager. Mm -hmm. I was angry. I would throw things. I would turn over furniture. When my hair didn't look right, I would just turn over furniture. I did it in my mom's home. I did it in my, in my apartment too. Anger. Mm -hmm. Do you know where that anger stemmed from? Or it, was it just something because I knew like... Um, I grew up where I had to share my life with a sibling who taunted me a lot. And so I would retaliate in anger. And my mother would just say, "You just, she's just being evil. I mean, later on in life, I've dealt with those issues. But I've noticed now that when people, um, if I come in contact with somebody who is really belligerent towards me, I'm, I'm a little bit better at it now. But how would you tell somebody who is really like put the match to the gasoline, they're about to explode. How would you tell them to deal with their anger? You know, first you got to recognize that there is an issue. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. I had to recognize that I had some issues, I had some problems. And because of what happened to me, and as I share that story in my book, all of that was in me. It was bottled up. It was so much going on. Right. And so it's going to be released some kind of way until you deal with it. So minds were through those different things and, and other ungodly characteristics right. that I chose to do those things that. And one thing, I didn't know what love was. Speak. And what well, real love I, is what I'm talking about real love. And, you know, the first person to really show you that real love is your father. Mm. And because I did not experience that, because I was looking for love in so many places, right. because there was so many things building up. And then you really had to recognize those were some of your issues. Right. But how did you really know? 
what those issues were. And for me, again, I have to go back to the spiritual. I have to go back to the Holy Spirit. I have to go back to the Word of God because the Word of God is going to find you out. In Psalms 51, it says, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit into me. So that, that God will shine that spotlight. We say God shine the spotlight. Oh, he will shine the spotlight. And he'll tell you the truth, won't he? He will tell you the truth, won't he? He will tell and you put it right in your face and say, hey, and deal with this. Exactly. But again, it's a process, but we have to be willing to say, you know, I do have these problems. I do have these issues. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the book, it says transforming into your life purpose. Right. So we all have to be transformed. There's a transformation that takes place in all of us if we want to, we really want it. So would that be to say that um, when we go to the altar, because some people have the notion that when they give their lives to Christ, they inst their life instantly shifts and then all of a sudden, sudden they're a super saint. I call them super saints. You know, they, they walking on water and they fire baptized. But tell me something. So you're saying that there's a process we have to go through to release this, that we get to this glory and glory of being um, more like Christ. Sanctif salvation is instantaneously. Right. You confess with your mouth. You believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. You accept him as your Lord and Savior. You denounce the enemy. And so you're saved. That's instantaneously. Right. But there is a process of that healing that has to go on. The things that we have to release, it doesn't release overnight. Right. I honestly say that when I became saved, and I've done it number numerous times, mm -hmm. you know, you go in, you fall out, you go in and fall out. You know about that. Right around the church <laughs> a little bit. You, you know, right. and you stop going, and then you all of a sudden come back and finally you get realized, like, I really need to get this thing right. right. So I did that mm -hmm. many times until finally I got it right. But you have to go through the transformation. And be willing to the, go through and the transformation. Willing. And it does not feel good. It hurts because it's going to allow you to see some things. Some of those things going to come back up before you. It's like spiritual surgery. It really is. Well, I am so excited because you actually have a luncheon coming up next month in February. So can you tell us a little bit about the name of the luncheon and where it is? And because I'm sure we're going to be delving into some of these issues of being fantabulous, but also recognizing who we are and loving us. So can you tell us a little bit about that luncheon, please? The luncheon is called Loving Me, Myself, and I. Right. We truly need to learn how to love ourselves. And I'm not talking about because somebody loving me or something like that. I'm really truly talking about loving you. You know, I used to look in the mirror and I would look one way to somebody on the outside, but boy, I went home. I hated myself at times mm -hmm. and I cried and I cried and I asked God, why? Why am I going through these things? What is happening in my life? Jesus, why? Mm -hmm. But you know, you got to learn how to really love yourself. You know, people get all kind of uh, surgeries and different things. I don't like this about myself. I don't like that about myself. I don't like any of these things about myself. But the surgery doesn't fix the inside. It, I mean, it doesn't fix the inside. You can doll it up, you can, it but, it, does it, but it doesn't fix the inside. Only a true love and a relationship with our creator God fixes the inside. And so I think some of that process we go through is the spiritual surgery that God performs on us to get our minds right and our hearts right and really cleanses our heart. Would you agree? I would agree because the surgeon is Jesus. He is. He, is the, he is the surgeon. And so he goes in. And so we get to that point. But going back to why loving me, myself, and I, because many times we truly don't love ourselves. So tell us about the luncheon. The luncheon? What date? With date, it is February 17th. So it's right after Valentine's Day. Right after Valentine's Day. And we're going to set it up. It's going to be like a love fest. All right, with ourselves. <laughs> Tell me who's going to be there. Um, I have five awesome speakers. Great. And you are one of them. And I look so forward to you 
having to say what you need to say to impact others who are there. I have Joe Braxton, and he's the male, and this is the first time for this. We got some men coming. We have, hopefully we have some male, men coming. Yeah, um, Joe Braxton, um, you know, men normally don't talk about their issues. Mm -hmm. So Joe is gonna share something. Men kind of cover it up, and then you find out that they act out on those things. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna have uh, Mia Reed. Okay. She's going to be the health expert. Okay. And we also have Carolyn White Washington. And she deals a lot around the PG County about uh, domestic violence. Awesome. And then we're having Teresa Royal Brown, who she has a book called Not Built to Break. And we're not built to break. You know that's my girl, right? I know that's she right. Was she, she, was, she was on the show, too. She was on the show, too. Tina, tell us where our audience can find you on social media. You can go to my business page. That is Fantabulous You on Facebook. You also can find me on Twitter of Fantabulous You. You can also go to my website, which is FantabulousYou.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. It's fantabulous. So we hope this show has inspired you to accept that you are wonderfully and fearfully made in the likeness and image of our creator God. Inside of you is everything you need to start pursuing your dreams and life purpose. I encourage you to continue to seek first the kingdom of God so that all the things you desire when you pray will manifest explosively in your life. Before I go, I would like to remind you to strive to know better. Even everything in life needs an upgrade or it will become extinct. When you know better, you can definitely do better and have better. So thank you so much for tuning in today. And to find out more about what I'm up to, follow me on Facebook under Now That I Know Better and Malika Star with two A's. I am also on Instagram as Malika Star too. Until we meet again, it is always my prayer that God blesses you abundantly and that you know how much he really loves you. And so do I. God bless.